morning everybody so figured it was time to show you some of my uh, recent adventures so I just got back from uh, run up to Grand Rapids and bought this and this off from a guy um, he had these on Facebook marketplace so obviously I already had a height gauge this is one that was from my dad's shop um, an 18 incher but <clears throat> this one's in nicer shape I don't really need a 24 incher for much but the price was right um, this and I'll show you this this is something I've really been needing this is a 20 inch Mitutoyo precision square and I've really been needing one of these for setup on the boring mill you know I need a reference for deciding when I've got something square on the table and it's gonna really speed the process up anyways I give a uh, guy on Facebook 260 bucks for the pair of them so that was a uh, you can't turn it down price, right? Um, just that Mitutoyo Square, I think they're almost 500 bucks for one of those now. This, I mean, this is the older model, but I think the new one of these is almost a thousand now. So anyways, decided I ought to add them to the collection. So just collect those. But the thing that I'm really interested in showing you guys is this box here. So I have never done an unboxing, but I'm a little nervous, and I thought, well, on camera anyways, I better show you guys. So this is supposed to be a tail stock for the Monarch 10 E. I really, really wrestled with whether I ought to uh, buy this one or not. This was on eBay. I think a couple of you mentioned it. I had found it, and then two, I think two different uh, viewers had mentioned seeing it. It looked a little rougher than what I wanted, and he wanted 650 bucks for it. Um, I offered him five, and he declined that. And I finally, after about two further weeks of not finding anything, offered him six, and he took it. So anyways, here we go. We'll see if this was uh, the worst idea of my life or fantastic. Now, something that I found shocking, I didn't realize, says on here, this thing weighs 75 pounds. I had no idea they were that heavy on this small of a lathe, but I mean I know they aren't on normal lathe, but I just I didn't realize that Monarch had overbuilt one that much. So first thing right off the bat I'm gonna say is I'm not super impressed with this. Like here's you know this was part of why I didn't want to buy it. Like the balls busted off the end of it, but this is literally thrown in the box rattling around with a tail stop, right? Like, the packaging here is just terrible. He literally just took this thing, dumped it in the box. Yeah, and look, here's the uh, hand wheel also just rattling around in the box with the rest of it. So that right off the bat does not impress me. All right, that's going to be this small of that. Here's my big question. What does the bottom look like? surface rust the wear does not look terrible though I think a uh, little bit of uh, attention with some rust 911 and we can make this something that I'm willing to put on my machine I guess is how I would put it I don't understand what I'm seeing here this is going to require a little more thought on my part it's got a pushing in the back end here somehow appears to have walked out. I don't understand what's going on with that. That's going to require a little bit more head scratching. <clears throat> anyway, I'll show you guys in a minute uh, what my solution for this is. So, I got on eBay, I got myself some three quarter inch just steel bearing balls and I'm going to try cleaning this all up and brazing those onto the tips of these two handles and then buffing it up and I think I can do a nice enough job of that that it won't uh, look glaringly bad but anyways yeah I guess the big thing I see here and I'm not sure about is there's bushing at the back end here that has it appears to have just walked out and I'm a little baffled by how or why it's loose enough that it could walk out I, hard for me to believe that Monarch would design it that way, so I'm 
little suspicious of that. But anyways, we'll see. Here's the other thing that I should be checking. Is well, I don't feel any side slap in it. Take a look here how the uh, number two Morris taper socket looks in here. That actually looks pretty decent. So, I don't know. I still am not in love with it. But, yeah, for whatever it was. Oh, look at this. That's interesting. Came with a drill check. Yeah, look at this, guys. This is, uh, it got thumped around pretty hard in transport. Look at that. It sheared to the front wiper right off thing. Busted the screws off. So that just goes back to that absolute garbage, garbage packaging job that this guy did. Yeah, that's very frustrating. So I'm going to have to dig out two broke off screws. I already have new wipers for these, so I don't care so much about that. But Okay, well, there you have it, guys. That's the... Uh, unboxing for the moment i think this is just a china chuck so i'm not very excited about that but whatever all right well i guess it's something to start with anyway so i'll show you guys probably some more footage later today we're going to rearrange the shop today move stuff into place and uh, i'll probably uh, shoot some footage of a bit of that but catch you later all right i thought i'd go ahead and tag a little addendum on the tail end of uh, the video for the New parts and pieces, so uh, as you can all see, the big move around has begun. Um, it's a pretty bad disaster right now because I didn't get as much time on this as I wanted to today. Had to go give a uh, bunch of money to the township for taxes. Had to drive down to Hartford where my junkyard is. But anyway, so what we've done so far is some friends came and helped. It was very appreciated and did a bunch of clean up, pick up, move up. We took the um, Colchester Mastiff and just punched it straight east to create enough room. Slide this out. It was nice having... So I've got four of these smaller size Heilman rollers and two of the big ones. So that gives me a six total. That worked great because we could put three under that one. I never, ever use four under a piece of machinery anymore. I don't know why they come in sets of four. You can't keep four under a machine no matter how hard you try. I guess when they were new and they got the little rubber pads on them, they'll kind of stay on them because they'll squish into them a bit. But even doing that... I have had those stupid things. You go across to dip in the concrete and leave one behind and not know it until the machine tries to tip over. That If I can't do it with three, that means I need three bigger ones than the ones that I've got. But anyways, so there's three under this, two under the headstock, one under the tail. Shoved it straight up. We've got this moved over. The next step is going to be to come in here with forklift and lift this thing and set it outside um, tomorrow is supposed to be dry in the afternoon, so probably in the afternoon I'm going to try and set it outdoors. And then <clears throat> the plan is to leave this sitting where it's, at, where it's at, get a set of rollers underneath the Carlton drill, and sneak that thing out around and stick it up into this spot. So anyways, that's the idea, is then once that's there get this um i realize it's clustery looking up there a bunch of stuff's got to move but get the uh, mastiff swung up and parallel with the wall and then i'm going to carry this back in and set it parallel in front of it but far enough forward that i can start working on the mastiff and the result of all of that should be that i actually have some room in my shop again so the only thing i haven't really settled on yet is how far up in i'm more all the time thinking about sticking the radial drill like way up in here. I'd been avoiding that with the idea that I wanted to be able to get at it <clears throat> with heavy stuff. But I think the answer is going to be put it as far that way as I can and just make sure that you know it's stuff on wheels that's in front of it so that if I need to get at it with a forklift or something heavy, I can. Um, and what I'm actually toying with the idea of is trying to leave this space open with the plan being that then as I'm bringing stuff in and out the door that I can actually work here. This is near the wood stove. It's a nice warm spot. And 
And then uh, on Wednesday mornings, we've got a guy's breakfast and Bible study group thing that meets here. And it'd be kind of nice to be able to set our chairs up by the wood stove. We had been out in this area, and it's kind of cold and not that much fun. That's why I don't know if you guys have ever noticed all the uh, cast iron skillets around. It's because on Wednesday mornings, 6 o'clock in the morning, we're frying eggs and cooking waffles. That's why all the... Uh, miscellaneous yeah you can see there's another cast iron skill it's because we scrub them things all out and cook breakfast but anyway that's just a, a mental rabbit trail on this video but so long and short of it is i'm hoping to keep this area mostly open and probably leaning towards putting the radial drill i'm not sure i'm i've got two options either putting it lengthwise right there i'll have to study how you know where it would have to be so that it clears the boring mill, doesn't interfere with it. Um, my gut tells me that's not going to work just because I haven't measured it out, but I think it's going to have to be too close to this door for the tail end of it to not interfere with stuff on the boring mill. But we'll see. If that won't work, then I think the backup plan is it going to be sitting crossways here, but that's going to be pretty rough on traffic flow too. So Maybe it'll have to go there and just be further this direction. But either way, my plan is to stick it up into here as far as I can and leave this area open. So anyhow, that's all of our guys. Oh, yeah, and i am uh, been flipping this black all day. This is uh, really interesting. I'm not even sure what this thing is, if it's what you'd call an angle plate or a setup block. It's cast iron. It's got a bunch of crazy shapes. It's got a solid half a side here, solid side here, full solid side here, and then a skeletonized everywhere else. Um, really crazy block, but looked handy. A friend of mine just gave me that that's cleaning up, so it's pretty surface rusty, and I've been slowly flipping it in the juice here and peeling the rest off. So one of these days I need to get a bigger, deeper tub and make a bigger batch of this stuff so that on this kind of rust removing I can just do it all in one swap, but... Anyhow, that's it, guys. I guess I'll uh, bring you back. Maybe I'll get time to shoot some video while we're moving stuff around. It's quite the entertaining uh, round of musical machinery.